Lease operators, holy is this topic getting extremely popular and so many comments on it. So in today's video, let's talk about why in the world do trucking companies offer lease operator positions? What is a lease operator? So number one, what is a lease operator? A lease operator is when a trucking company has their own fleet trucks and what they do is they give it and sell it to company drivers in order to make them owner operators within their fleet. So they are called lease operators operator or traditionally known as the lease purchase program. Why in the world do trucking companies do this? Well, a lot of you have made comments out there about, you know, the company is screwing people over, the company is just trying to, you know, find idiots to take over their leases. That's really not the reason why companies, trucking companies, give off this lease purchase program. And to answer that question, we're going to talk a little bit about why does RBC give their employees stock options? Why in the world do big corporations or these billion dollar companies, why do they give their employees stock options within their company? Why is it that these stock options are only able to mature in two or three years? Okay, so good employees, these companies try to hold on to good employees and give them an incentive of why to stay and make a little bit more money. Trucking companies are the exact same way. So when you have really good drivers, you want to give them an incentive of why they should stay within your company. So whether it's these big multi gazillion dollar corporations, okay, that are giving stock options to their employees or trucking companies that are giving these options for lease programs to their employees, it's really just a way to help to give an incentive for the employee to stay in their company a lot longer. So RBC does it, TD does it, all the traditional banks do it, all these publicly traded companies, they do the exact same thing. Now, why do they make it that the stocks are only available to them or they can only cash in on their stocks? stocks in two or three years. Well, guess what? If you leave the company, you're not cashing in on their stocks, right? Well, the exact same thing with trucking companies. So what they do is they try to lock in good drivers for a longer period of time help them earn more money. And yes, the drivers do earn more money. I've created three extremely popular videos, okay? So one of them is comparing pays. And I'm gonna link them down below is what's the pay difference between a traditional company driver versus a lease operator. So let's talk about personality. So in today's world, everything that we do, everything that we touch, all of our electronics, does not last very long okay trucks are not made to last long electronics are not made to last long this mindset has gone into our working habits people don't stay for a long periods of time at their current employees this mindset is following us through into our daily routines okay so we are we don't have jobs it's very rare to find somebody that has a job for 10 or 15 years people want to go up the ladder really really fast nobody has patience anymore things are not made to last anymore people's patience i mean everybody wants everything right now and same thing with company drivers company drivers don't want to be making 55 cents per mile they want to be making a lot more so these lease programs are meant to give an incentive to a company driver to make more money now who's going to sign on to a lease program only one of two reasons number one you're in debt you have bad credit you need money right now okay and the second reason you sign on to a lease program is if you don't have enough money for a down payment 90% of the people that I meet that are company drivers that walk into my office they have bad credit and they cannot save money for a down payment so we're not gonna get into why we get ourselves into the situation where we have bad credit, where we don't have sufficient funds for a down payment, but those are the reasons of why you should consider signing a lease program. Okay, so guys with good credit and guys with the ability to save, they have money saved up, you really shouldn't be just going to the dealerships and buying a truck. A lease program is not really meant for you. Just be careful of the six week waiting period between the time you purchase the truck until you finish you know, financing it and until that truck is on the road. So don't give yourself that gap of six weeks where you're not working. I see a lot of drivers going wrong over there. But let's get back to the story of why lease programs. So lease programs is meant for these drivers that need money right now. They need a solution right now. When we have $3,800 worth of expenses and we're only making $4,200 net, it's very hard to come out of debt, especially when you're backed up with these credit card debts and loans and line of credits. Let's respond to some of the comments that are out there. So when I did my last video, I posted a three month pay statement of a lease operator and I posted the exact same mileage. There was a driver that did 36,000 miles in three months as a lease operator. He brought home $25,000 and then there was a company driver 
that got paid 55 cents per mile also did 36,000 miles he took home $9,700 so one of the comments was how in the world did this guy pay 50% in taxes well guess what we live in Canada all right and when you are in a higher bracket you are going to pay about 44 45 percent of your gross income in taxes welcome to cpp eu and ei okay everybody pays for it and everybody gets everybody pays the exact same same amount so hopefully that answers your question question number two why don't you ever mention how you pay a lease driver percentage or per mile well i think that i all my videos talk about the per mile i will get into about the gross pay so in our company we don't have any drivers okay not a lease operator not company driver that get paid on gross percentage we're not the type of company we pay per mile and on every mile and we pay the same whether it's canadian miles or u.s miles so no we do not have and that's why i don't show it if i did have company drivers or lease operators on gross percentage then I would show those pay stubs to you but we don't have it so question number three correct me if I'm wrong but when you did the mileage and pay for the company driver you didn't include any bonus extra for drops pickups and layovers so wouldn't his pay actually be higher yes you are 100% right so I did not include his three cent quarterly bonus I did not include any extra pickups or drops layovers if you talk to any one of our drivers there are no layovers in this company it's very rare that I see a layover in this company so yes I would say that maybe an extra $500 he would have made so instead of $9,700 he would have made about $10,300 he would have made in net earnings so no I did not include bonuses no I did not include extra pickups or drops or layovers so next comment why would anyone want to work for a company that doesn't pay company drivers very well I work for Swift dedicated account in America people may laugh at this but I make a thousand dollars net a week that's twelve thousand dollars in three months i'm a brand new driver as well swift has jobs that range from 60 cents per mile to 70 cents per mile right now et transport doesn't pay good they are making a killing off of their drivers so trucking blake the pay difference between Canadian drivers and US drivers are substantially different, okay? You make a lot more money as a company driver in the US, and yes, I have heard of jobs ranging from 70 and 80 cents per mile. In Canada, the norm is between 50 to 65 cents per mile. 65 cents per mile for flatbed drivers, and the norm about 55 cents per mile for company drivers. Okay, now I have to say this out there because there's a lot of truck drivers here, especially in the GTA that work on a Driver Inc. model. A Driver Inc. model is when a driver opens up a corporation and pretends to be like he's self-employed. He's not self-employed, okay? This is a loophole in our tax system. There are companies that are getting bombarded right now with fines for doing things like this. They are cracking down on it. And if you're a company driver that lives in the greater Toronto area that is under a Driver Inc. model, it's just a matter of time until they crack down on you okay and they will back charge you and interest for the last couple of years I've seen it happen hopefully it doesn't happen to you but it's just a matter of time until they crack down on it so the norm here in Canada 55 cents per mile is a standard wage for company drivers here in Canada especially if you're doing Midwest USA and Southeast USA runs and West Coast runs if you are servicing New York New Jersey Pennsylvania the Northeast yes it is a low pay range pay ranges for the northeast range about 62 63 cents per mile in canada so if you're servicing new york new jersey pennsylvania which we don't here at et transport yes that rate per mile is low but if you are servicing the midwest usa and the southeast usa 55 cents per mile is the norm so hopefully truck and blake that answers your question yes the rates in the u.s are much higher than the rates in canada next comment warning this guy is full of so somebody saying that I'm full of shit. He's showing you one pay period out of the trucker's whole year. Ask him to show you the lowest paycheck and negative paychecks back to back. Ask him to show you a pay average year over year. So whoever this guy is, Rue something. So to answer your question, I did, because of your comment, do a pay period for three months, okay? Back to back pays, as you said, okay? Where the driver made $25,000 in three months. All right, so hopefully that answers your question. And to put together a year, and I am working on it, to put together six months pay or a one year pay takes a lot of time in order to put this data together. So bear with me, be patient with me, and I'm going to assure you that I will do a six month pay and a one year pay. And I'll even take it one step further. I'll bring in an owner operator, 
in here, a lease operator that's been doing it for one year and I'll get him to give you his feedback. How's that for an answer for you? Okay, last comment. I wanna hear what it breaks down to in hourly pay. How many hours behind the wheel did you have to spend? I don't give a shit about miles. So our industry is based on miles, okay? So the hourly, I mean, drivers here, especially the drivers that, let's take an example, the guy that produced 36,000 miles, I am certain that the guy worked 70 hours, the full 70 hours in seven days. So if you multiply that with, you know, four weeks in a month, 4.2 weeks in a month, the guy worked 280 hours per month, multiply that by three months. So there's the math for you. If you want, I can do it for you on my phone to get your hourly pay. Okay guys, because I am somewhat okay with math, all right, I'm gonna do this for you. All right, so if the driver made $25,000, which is what our driver made in three months, we're gonna divide that by three months, okay? $8,333 what the driver makes per month. The driver drives a maximum of 70 hours per week and there's four weeks in a month. That's 280 hours. If we take $8,333 that he made in a month and divide that by 280 hours, we come to $29.76 per hour. Okay, I hope that answers your hourly wage question. So cross-border drivers in our lease purchase program are making about $30 per hour. Now, if you didn't watch my five predictions for the near future, one of my predictions is, is that the industry for cross-border drivers is going to convert into hourly wage. I've been hearing about it. We're testing it ourselves here where we pay drivers per hour and not by the mileage. You know, stay tuned. We are in the works. We are testing it out with one or two drivers. I feel like I said it about six months ago and I really feel like the industry is headed that way. Drivers no longer want to get paid on mileage. They want to get paid hourly. This was the exact same theme about 10 or 12 years ago, maybe even more, probably 15 years ago, when drivers did no longer want to get paid on gross earnings. They wanted to get paid on mileage. So the industry 15 years ago, converted from getting paid by the load, it converted to getting paid by the mileage. So this was something that owner operators pushed onto companies. And I feel like the same push is gonna happen with hourly pay versus mileage pay. I feel like company drivers will no longer wanna work under mileage, they wanna get paid hourly. So if you're, that's the math for you on our lease program, you're probably making about $30 net per hour after you pay off the truck and after you pay off your fuel, that's net into your pocket. Well, there you have it. I hope you learned something from this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. For those of you, I think the stat is that 86% of the people watching these videos are not subscribed to the channel. So in order to make a difference, I need your help in order to make it in this North American market. Please subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. And you know what, if you have a comment, don't be shy, leave it below. I answer a lot of these comments myself. Usually it's late at night. My wife gets mad at me that I'm always on my phone. But you know what? I respond to these comments. So give it a like, give it a comment, and I'll see you in the next